Walker up here, and he's going to say that he clocked me doing 80 miles an hour in a 65 mile an hour zone, and he did. I was doing it. Well, then why'd you do this case then? I'm here because they're bigger criminals than me. They have no authority to prosecute me because they're really the criminals. And all oh, the prosecutor had a fit. And so you did it as an educational. Yes. And 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 then what did you teach the jury? I had a motion to disqualify the judge before the court, and he turned it down himself. That's a crime. No, they have to let another judge look at that, don't they? Exactly. Motion to recuse the judge can deny himself. But a motion to disqualify, he cannot. But he did. And then after that, the first thing I did was ask the policeman when he signed his last oath of office. Prosecutor objected. The judge sustained. I said, Your Honor, I have a right to test the credibility of this witness. The judge said, Well, Mr. Kelton, this witness is credible. And just how did this witness become credible? He's credible because I say he's credible. Mr. Bailiff, did you hear that? Yes, Mr. Kelton, I did. Drag that judge down off that bench. Judge, you get down off that bench. You are disqualified. <laughs> All right, we're doing the break for PrisonPlanet.tv. Viewers, tell us what happened. We'll come back, finish up, tell folks, uh, are, you, are you going to be having a seminar anytime soon? I hope to. We don't have Well, good. Well, when that's working. coming up, we'll, we'll plug it here. We'll have you back on. Of the three million... Okay, go ahead and uh, tell folks uh, what happened in that case. Oh, they found me guilty, and then I went to the district attorney and, and tried to file criminal charges against the judge and the district attorney's investigator who wouldn't identify himself threw me out of the building at gunpoint with two bailiffs and frankly I just haven't had time to go back and pursue them I have but but I, I personally heard about some of your victories with other helping other people and somebody in here running the show you really helped him and I spent like 10 grand trying to help him they did nothing with the normal lawyers and you you know got it done pretty quick um, I mean tell us about just real fast some of the basic victories well there, there was that one, three Class B misdemeanors, and what I did was accuse the policeman of arresting him for exercising a constitutional right. When he told them he didn't want to talk to him anymore, that he needed his attorney and rolled up his window, they arrested him for interfering with the public servant. I call that punishing someone for exercising a constitutional right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, his, uh, what is that, the seventh? I forget. Which one is it for the right to counsel, or, or the, the, the fifth is well, also not the top? Texas law, it would be Article 1, Paragraph 10. Okay. So, and the case law says to punish someone for exercising a constitutional right is a due process violation of the most basic sort. So I charge the officers with aggravated kidnapping, false imprisonment, and then they took him to jail instead of a magistrate. I walked down that writ of habeas corpus and charged everyone with a criminal act for every act, everyone with the criminal act of every other actor, they, including the prosecuting attorney and the judge. When the prosecutor got it, he looked at all of these allegations, and he said, I do not want to go here. Because he did his homework, he went back and looked at the supporting law and found that it was right. Uh, Tell folks about uh, what's happened in your own little county. You were saying you really... In, in, in Wise County, it took some 15 years. I never got, and this was my a learning process. That's where I got my elbow broke and where the officer stove in three ribs. I stayed after the, the sheriff and the district attorney, the district judge, just harassed them with criminal complaints, and they would hide from the grand jury. And that put, that's what taught me how to get around all these maneuvers they pulled. Never got anyone arrested, never got anyone indicted, but they changed everything. Well, it's the process. It's, it's kind of like out of hundreds of battles, only a handful were won by the revolutionary forces, but finally the British just were tired. Exactly. And, and it's just you just teach them, you educate them. Yeah, and they finally said, enough of this. The last time I spoke to my district judge in Wise County, I was in the his courtroom talking to the bailiff. He ran in the courtroom and said, Mr. Kelton, you're creating a disturbance. You get out of this courthouse or I'll have you arrested. And I said, oh, gee, Judge, I'm sorry. And I reached in my pocket and pulled out this little digital tape recorder. I didn't have this turned on. I clicked the button and stuck it right in his face and said, will you say that again? And the judge looked at me like... Oh, let's go back on there. Okay. You were just telling me during the break about... Um 
in your own town with the judge threatening you, and you pulled out the recorder. Yeah, the district, uh, all of them hate me except the county attorney. And I've been after him a long time. I never got anybody arrested in Wise County, never got anybody indicted, never even got anyone presented to the grand jury. But they do take everyone they arrest directly to the nearest magistrate. And that's because I just kept harassing them. I didn't get them indicted, but I was always so close. They're literally playing Russian roulette with me. And I was just telling the story the last time I spoke to my district judge. I was in his courtroom talking to his bailiff, and he ran in and said, Mr. Kelton, you're creating a disturbance. You get out of this courthouse or I'll have you arrested. I reached in my pocket. I said, I'm sorry, Judge. I didn't have this turned on. Pulled out a little digital recorder, clicked it on, held, stuck it in his face and said, will you say that again? And he was looked at me and was breathing hard, and I know what he was thinking. That damn district attorney, he didn't tell me everything. And the judge was right. I was talking to the bailiff because the high sheriff of the county sent me to talk to the bailiff in order to file criminal charges against the district attorney. And the district attorney told the judge I was creating a disturbance. I filed making a terroristic threat against the district judge with the attorney general. The only time the attorney general is the prosecutor of original jurisdiction is in a matter of a complaint against a district attorney under open records. But how did it get so corrupt all over the country where none of them follow proper procedure, none of them follow the state and federal law, they just do whatever they want? I have a document on my website I call the Frog Farm Conspiracy. Uh, and the reason I call it that is Samuel Clements once said, you take a frog, throw him in a pot of hot water, he'd jump out. Take that same frog, put him in a pot of cold water, gradually raise the heat. Well, over time, through a series of seemingly minor adjustments toward administrative convenience and adjudicative expediency, we took one little step out uh, after another outside the legal, legal limits. And then one day we look around and wonder how we got in this mess. And it's, it's bad, but on the other hand, because it's so bad, it gives us a lot more power in changing it. They are so far away from rule of law, they have zero defense. And all we have to do is keep hammering them. Right now, I'm just one person. And just one person, I've got the, all of the judges of the Court of Criminal Appeals wondering if they're going to get indicted. That's extremely powerful, even if I don't get them indicted. Well, I mean, here's an example. I want to hold you over five minutes, and we can in the next hour, and then we're going to get uh, Senator Karen Johnson on for a 50-plus uh, minute interview and take calls, listeners, on 9-11 and all these big developments that have happened there. Uh, but when we come back, I want you to uh, answer this for me in the five minutes we've got left. Here's an example of what we did. You know, with the, Aust with the Abstent uh, Student Assistance Program, ASAP, uh, in 98-99, if your child didn't go to school one morning with the flu and you had the flu or forgot to call, the police would come and demand in, threaten parents. They would arrest you. But truancy was 14 absences unexcused in a semester. So we went to the county commissioner's court and would read the law and say, and then we found out that they would take three uh, late uh, you, you know, sixth graders being late to class three times and call that an absence. And they would bring them into these little portable buildings and say, but it wasn't real court. We got video of it. They would just say, sign a document. They we're signing them on a probation via contract fraud. And we cut back on some of that. Now they're back with it. I mean, I can't fight everything. But the point is, it's not even laws. I mean, it's all fraud. So I want to talk about contract fraud with you. Because you're talking about how to keep them accountable. I mean, just for the average public to know, the government is criminal. Stop trusting them. We'll be back in one minute. Thank you for listening to GCN.